without further ado, let's get going on Rotary Club Central. Uh, we've got about 30 to 35, 40 minutes or so um, to talk about this topic. Uh, let me, I'm going to share my screen right now so everyone can see. Let me introduce myself. Here we go. So we can make it big as well for the moment. All right. So good to see everyone here. We got a slightly larger class this time around, so I'm excited to see that. Because of that, we're not going to go around and introduce ourselves um, just because we're, we want to be sensitive to the time and definitely get all the information out. So if we have time at the end, we can, you know, leave it, I'll leave a few minutes for questions. And then if you want to introduce yourself, then that's totally fine. If you have any burning questions, feel free to reach out and just, you know, unmute yourself and say it. If not, if you think it can wait till the end, we'll wait till the end. I'll get through everything first. Um, my name is Nick Taylor. I work at Rotary International. So I work here and live here in Evanston, Illinois, just uh, right north of the city of Chicago. And I work with, uh, in teams of two with my colleague, James D'Amato. And our emails are right here. So we work in the, the team called Club and District Support. So what that means is we pretty much cover and support about, uh, let's see, just real quick. Um, go Bears, yes. <laughs> so we cover 39 uh, different districts around the country. So we cover 26, zones 26, 27, and also 25B. So we have a lot of different districts. We, we support and we help. We primarily focus on district governor lines. So prepping the DGNs, DGEs, and then the DG, DG, DGs as well. And of course, we do help and support uh, club presidents, club officers, and assistant governors and all that. So we really deal a lot with um, policy issues. So anything that has to do with the manual of procedures, standard Rotary Club constitution, any, anything from like attendance issues to membership to harassment um, to also online tools, which is one of the things we're going to talk about today with myrotary.org. We're not IT specialists, um, but we do know we are very familiar with the tools and we can kind of go in the back end and hopefully help people out with those types of things. All right. Let me get out of this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at Rotary Club Central. So Rotary Club Central is part of myrotary.org. And so myrotary.org, and we'll use an analogy. Um, some people like it, some people don't. I personally think it helps is if you imagine a house. So myrotary.org is a house. And within that house, there's different rooms. And in those rooms are things like the brand center, uh, the learning center, Rotary Club Central, et cetera. So they're all separate parts of myrotary.org. So when you log into myrotary.org and you scroll down to the bottom, you see a box that says online tools. So these are all the tools that you have access to through myrotary. Oftentimes we get calls and you know, we talk to people and they say, well, I'm having issues with Rotary Club Central. And what they really mean is something else on myrotary or the brand center, et cetera. But we're really only focusing on Club Central which has to do with goals. So why do we need Rotary Club Central is the question. Why do we even have to have Rotary Club Central? The idea behind Rotary Club Central is to really focus on unity, is bringing clubs together um, so that they can gather and support each other around a set of goals. It's to give us vision. You know, We're talking about creating a vision, creating a strategic plan. These are all the items that you really want to focus on whenever you're making these strategic plans. And as James just perfectly said, we want to do this together. This, this isn't done in a vacuum, you know. So every member in your club has access to Rotary Club Central, whether they're a club officer, whether they're on the board, whether it's an assistant governor. Anyone can see, in your, if as long as they're a member of your club, they can see that information. So it really can unify uh, a group. And it really does give us this vision. One of the uh, examples that comes to mind, I'm, I'm a big mountain person despite living in Chicago. All my vacations are to mountains somewhere and I like climbing, running around the trails. And Edmund Hillary in 1953 was the first person to ever climb Everest. Um, and so he, with his Sherpa and he got back down and somebody interviewed him and they said, well, what did you do on top, right? You're the first, first team to make it to the top of the tallest mountain in the world. And his answer was, he spent a few moments, you know, taking it all in. 
And then he started to map out all the different routes on all the surrounding mountains in the Himalayas that he wanted to do. So he had that vision from the top that he could actually see. And that's kind of what we're hoping for with Rotary Club Central is we hope that you can use it to really map out your future and map out what we're going to see, what you're going to do as a club. So let me go back just to double check. Um, there's a few different ways. Whenever you log into myrotary.org, um, there's a few different ways, and I apologize. I have a crying six-month-old baby in the background, so if you do hear that, that's going to just happen. So, <laughs> uh, so when you log into myrotary.org, you have a few different ways of getting into Rotary Club Central. You can hover over something called like the Manage tab, go down to the bottom left and click on Rotary Club Central. Um, a few other tabs have access to it, like the Membership Center also has it, I believe. But the easiest way, yep, right there. The easiest way for me is I just scroll down to the bottom, find that online tools, and I just click on the link to Rotary Club Central. It'll pull up a dashboard and so this is what everyone's going to see whenever they log into rotary club central it'll show some of the main metrics that we keep track of and this is just an overview it's just like a cover page essentially so it's going to show the last five years of some things like membership trends gender trends age trends um, and then some foundation information and, and service projects as well so this is just gonna show you kind of where your club has been over the last five years and do it in more of like a visual way so that you can actually see, is my club projecting upwards with membership? Is it projecting downwards? Is my female membership growing or declining? What, where's our age demographics? And can really help you, as I mentioned before, as you're creating this strategic plan for your club. What do you want your club to look like in five years? Do you want it to be 50-50 with male and female? Do you want it to be 100 members or more? Um, some clubs thrive with lower members, and et cetera. And so they create satellite clubs. There's a lot of flexibility within this. But the main thing that we want to focus on is the goal center. So you're going to go to right on the left, you're going to click on this tab that says the goal center. Now, quick cancel. OK. So, there's different goals that we can all set on Rotary Club Central. And for each year, it doesn't really differ from year to year. But what we have is we have different categories. So we have members in engagement, Rotary Foundation and Giving, Service, Young Leaders, Public Image, Rotary Citation, and all. So we want to first things first, before we do anything else, we want to think about, OK, what year am I a club officer or an assistant governor? So am I a current president in 2019, 2020, or am I a president elect or an incoming secretary, or am I an incoming assistant governor? And the first things we want to do is make sure we're in the right year. So we get tons of questions all the time from president elects who are like, Hey, I'm a president elect. I just went to Lone Star Pets and everyone told me that I had to set my goals, but I, I don't have access. And they log in and they're under 2019, 2020. First things first, make sure you're in the right year. If you're a president-elect, you want to click over to 2020, 2021. If you're a current officer, you want to stay in 2019, 2020. There's six different people that have access to uh, Rotary Club Central or to edit these goals in Rotary Club Central. So it's the president, the president-elect, the secretary, the treasurer, the foundation chair, the membership chair, and then also the uh, executive secretary, director, if that exists, and then the assistant governors. So if I'm an assistant governor over four different clubs, I should have access to these four clubs. Now, for the most part, if, you, if you're one of those officers and you still don't have access, there's usually a few different reasons. The first one being, like I said, you're on the wrong year. Second one is maybe you're inputted as an officer in Club Runner or DACDB and hasn't integrated over to RI's database. That is often the case, and if that's the case, just let me know. Um, we might have time at the end of this little session that I can even troubleshoot and see where, uh, if that is anyone's situation. And so, but, or in the off chance, sometimes Rotary Club Central glitches and it takes away access. So what, that's an easy fix. So what I'm trying to get at is it's an easy way to fix any access issues that we might have. But to set a goal, so let's say we're a current president, even though there's only a few weeks left in 2019, 2020, we're a current president 
and we really want to get that citation. We really want to get the rotary citation. So we go into all, just to make it easy. And so this will show all 25 goals that are available on Rotary Club Central. As you can see, as I scroll down, they're all right here. Now, there are three different types of goals in Rotary Club Central. Uh, the first one is going to be something like membership, where it's automatically updated the achievement. So this, the data comes straight from RI's database. So as you input members, it's going to update that. So if I want, but you can still set the goal. So for example, to set the goal, you select the goal, make sure that's green right there. If not, it won't let you click on it. And then, you know, you have a goal, your, your actual, your achievement right now is 57, but let's take a look at our last five years. So if you click on goal history right below it, it'll show you the last five years. So we kind of spiked in 2015 and started to slowly decline. Let's say we're at 57 now, we have three weeks left, and maybe we can get one more person in our club. So we're gonna set a goal for 58. So that's gonna be our first goal. As I mentioned, the achievement will automatically be updated because it's coming from Rotary Database. Service participation is gonna be your next one. So same thing, let's take a look at our last five years, see where we've been. Uh, it's not, uh, this is, and I should mention before we go on, this is an actual data, this is a dummy account, and so it's just a practice account, so none of this is from an actual club. But let's say, so service participation is how many people we wanna participate in service activities throughout the year. So we had a goal of 60 last year, 61. So we select the goal. We wanna put 65 this year. So we're gonna do 65. And hopefully, you know, these are set even before your year as an officer starts. And then throughout the year, you can update that achievement. And so we go over to achievement with three weeks left. We say, hey, you know, we've looked at the numbers. We've actually done 70 people. So now you're gonna save this. And it's going to show your two goals that we have set. So we've set and achieved this one for service participation, and this one we're working on getting. So 58 uh, or 57 of 58. Now, whenever anyone else from your club gets on Rotary Club Central, whether they have access or not, this is what they're going to see. They're going to see the the goals that are set. They won't see the goals that aren't set. They'll only see the goals that are set. And like I mentioned before, this is a way to keep your club transparent and they'll be able to keep everyone uh, accountable um, they'll be able to say hey we're so close to you know we just need one more person to reach this goal let's go do it and hopefully it can motivate people there are a few other goals that are pretty simple so if we go down here to the strategic plan all this means you know we're talking about strategic plans is we want clubs to have strategic plans you don't have to show anything beyond that you've done it so you select the goal Let's say in the next three weeks you finish that goal, you just make sure it's, you go from no to yes. And then if we save it, now that shows up right here. So it's, you know, you don't have to overthink it. A lot of the goals in Rotary Club Central are just simple, basic things that you can put in. Nothing, we don't need documentation. I don't, we don't need to see the, the goal. Rotary International doesn't really go on and check any of the goals for Rotary Club Central. Yeah, we use the data just like the membership numbers and the foundation numbers, et cetera, but we're not actually going through and checking to make sure. This is really just for the club. It's a club tool designed to help you um, as a club officer and, or an assistant governor, district officer to really manage and improve your club situation. Uh, what else do we have? So for incoming officers, so for all the incoming officers of 2020, 2021, we, uh, we want to make sure that you can go in and do this before your year starts. And with a lot of the uncertainty, I know some clubs are starting to meet, some aren't. This is actually a fantastic thing to do virtually. So for a virtual club um, meeting, you can actually get everyone together just like we're doing right now for 2021 and say, hey, we want to set the goals for next year. Let's do this as a club. So you go over to edit. And then you can start setting these goals. So setting the goals for membership, service participation, uh, RAG participation, leadership development participation. If you ever need to know what they are and what they entail, just click on that goal history and it'll say how many members will participate in leadership development programs or activities during the rotary year. It'll give you a brief description. 
and also show you the last five years worth of data that your club has on that on that specific goal. And then going through, and then you can set these goals. Remember, you got to click that green box right here, and then you have access. If you don't click the green box, it won't give you access to do it. So all you have to do is click that green box right there, and then you can update that goal. And then throughout the year, let's say you set a few goals. Throughout the year, you can go ahead and update that achievement. So in our previous uh, breakout earlier today, we were talking about like the benefit of that and you know having people see the achievement and being transparent. So like on Facebook, whenever there's like a GoFundMe uh, uh, fundraiser, and you can actually see how close they are to that goal. For me as a person, I'm much more likely to donate to that cause if I know like, hey, I know we're only a few hundred dollars away, I'm gonna donate. And so that's essentially what we're going for with Rotary Club Central. We want people to see how close you are. So to set the goals before your year starts, and then to continually update it, and you can do them as club meetings throughout the year to update your goals. Go back and look at your, st uh, your strategic plan so that you, know, you can keep everyone accountable and keep that motivation going. There's one goal uh, that doesn't, it's a little bit tricky, so all this service project goals. So you click down here to service activities, and this is actually where you add in your service project. So let's say, uh, you do a fun run, a 5K run um, to raise money for COVID, and maybe you do it virtually. So everyone donates, but then they go off and they run a 5K at their own leisure, walk, whatever it may be. So what you're going to do is you go to add a new service project, and then you'll fill in all the information right here, and it'll keep track of when you did it, when it happened, uh, some of the project metrics, the volunteers, the hours, the cash contributions, etc. And then this will automatically update into the goal center as well. Um, and you could even do this as a reoccurring project. So let's say it's something you do every single year. You do this virtual, you do a 5K every year. It's always on May 15th or whatever it may be. Um, there's, we don't have one right here in this dummy account, but there should be something right here that says reoccurring project. And all you have to do is just click that and then update that information. So those are the main things with the goals on Rotary Club Central. Uh, there's a few other little things that are nice about Rotary Club Central is there's once you get in here there's resources so everything you need to know about what I've just explained how to set a goal how to update progress how to save etc it's all these are all how-to guides so if you ever get confused it's all in the resource section right here and you can update that information or you can click on that it'll download a nice little PDF that'll walk you through it with pictures and everything there's also some reports that you can run um, both in club reports, district reports, and then foundation giving and service. So if you're curious how, what Rotary International has on the specifics uh, for the foundation, for example, you can run a report and you can find that information. So as I mentioned before, this is a house and Rotary Club Cent Central is a room in that house. So to get back into the main house, we just click on My Rotary, the home button right here. And it'll take us back to My Rotary. Now we're back on our main page. Now this is the house. So another question that we often get is, I'm a lieutenant governor, or I'm a, I'm a, a chief of staff, or I'm a service chair. And these are all you know, offices that, aren't, that Rotary International doesn't track. So as I mentioned before, we only really track those six offices, president, uh, secretary, treasurer, foundation chair, membership chair, and executive secretary, and then AGs. But they also want access to maybe help, or let's say none of the club officers in your, in your club are really tech savvy, or they don't want to do it, they just want to have somebody else help out. There is a way to delegate or share your access with that individual. So if you're on this main page right here, uh, you can go up to delegation right next to your profile and you click on that and it'll actually let you delegate your role to another individual. So let's say I'm a president of a club. I'm very busy. I've got, you know, work, life, family. I've got, you know, planning the meetings every week. I just don't, I, I, I don't, I can't think about Rotary Club Central. It's just too much, but somebody else in my club, uh, Mike or whoever it may be, and I'm like, man, Mike, he, he, needs an, he needs a job. He needs to be engaged. And I think he'd be great at this. So, so I delegate my role to Mike. 
and Mike can keep track of this and Mike can constantly update the achievement and give new, uh, updates throughout the um, throughout the the year on how we're doing and we just it's a simple delegate you hit delegate role as club president and you can share that access I still have my access nothing's changed with me I'm just merely sharing my access with another person the only issue with this is you can only do it one person at a time so one of the questions in our last breakout session was there was a lieutenant governor and he said, hey, there's three or four lieutenant governors in the district. Rotary International doesn't track that office, so I don't have access to my clubs. And he's like, what do I do? Well, in that case, the district governor couldn't just access or share or delegate his access to, or his or her access to three or four people. But there's multiple roles. There's multiple district roles and district officers. So like, they can each share one person in a club any of those six individuals that I mentioned can share their access with another person. So theoretically, if you have six club officers, 12 people could have the same access. And so for some of you, some of these larger, larger clubs of a hundred plus, uh, that's kind of how you can delegate and divvy up the assignments with that. So we'll go back to my rotary. Um, I think that was, those were the main things I wanted to hit with rotary club central and my rotary. You can also access things such as the brand center. If you go to where is it? member center right here, hover over that and you can get to brand center. Uh, here it is, uh, club administration. You can pay your club dues on here. You can do all those different things. Um, but club central was the main thing that we wanted to focus on today. Uh, let me stop sharing just for a minute so I can see all your faces. Uh, yeah, so we wanted to talk about club officers who didn't have access. We did that. Um, if you're not a club officer, you can use delegation. And oh, the citation. That was the last thing I wanted to talk about. So with the citation, uh, there's two different categories this year. Before COVID hit, it was achieving five goals in each of those categories. Because of COVID and because of the lack of being able to meet, et cetera, now it's only three out of each, uh, three of the nine in each category for 2019, 2020. Starting in 2020, 2021, of those 25 goals, when you go over to all, the 25 goals that we showed, you only have to achieve 13 of them. So maybe you set 13 goals and you achieve 13 goals. You get the citation, any 13, or you set 25 and only achieve 13, you still get the citation. So those are the main differences between the Rotary Citation Award this year and then the Citation Award next year. And hopefully, you know, it goes well because this, this simplifies it and makes it much more intuitive for club officers. Hopefully it goes well and then it just kind of stays that way from here on out and it'll just be like 13 out of the 25 I'm not sure if your district has or will designate specific goals that they want you to get, um, but Rotary International, from our standpoint, we, uh, we're good with any 13 of the 25. So those were the main things I wanted to cover. We have about 10 to 11 minutes left. Uh, does anyone else have a question? I'd be more than happy to walk back through some of the things. I know we went a little bit fast, uh, so yeah, just go ahead and yell out if you have anything or unmute yourself. Hey, Nick, can you go over the uh, showcase? I can. Yeah, no problem. So Rotary Ideas and Rotary Showcase is generally um, how we talk about service projects, right? And I, I'm sure you may or may not have heard, but Ideas is actually going away, but we will have Showcase. So I can, Showcase is a way to it is what it, what it sounds like. It's a way to show off your uh, service projects that you did. So let me share my screen again. We'll go back to my rotary. So another one of these rooms, right, within my rotary is going to be rotary showcase. So easiest way to get there, as I mentioned before, go to myrotary.org or my.rotary.org. Scroll down to online tools. And you go to rotary showcase. And I'm not sure if this dummy account will have access to really play around much with it, but we can definitely pull it up and see what we can see. Just give me one minute while we get in there. It's 
speaking a little slow. Okay. So yeah, I mean, the idea of showcase is to really highlight what you've done. Um, so you can search for projects, the location, um, projects by cause, see what other, these are, these are completed projects or so projects that have been done, or maybe they do them on an annual basis, et cetera. Um, but if we click on one, so we'll go to end polio forever projects, just because that's the first one up. Um, so there's a project that happened in Belarus in 1st of August of 2019. So a test TPL for showcase. And we'll see what happens. But yeah, you can pull it up. You can see what they did. Um, I don't believe there's, there may or may not be contact information for you to reach out to the, the club. And I think this, I mean, this is just a test one because this is not an actual account. But yeah. So that's showcase. Does that answer your question? So my question was more how, how you get information in here. Got it. So right here, do you want to add a project? There's okay, got add it. a new okay. project right there. And okay. So. And, and does this tie back to the goals automatically or do you have to do it twice? So that's a good question. Um, so in 2018, 2019, it, you had to do it in Rotary Showcase and then it would connect back to Rotary Club Central. In 2019, 2020 and from here on out, you don't. So there's no requirement to add anything in the Showcase for Rotary, Club, or Rotary Citation Awards. Okay. So that's a good question. No, they really just want to keep Rotary Showcase as, as a highlight tool. And really, you know, they're going to come up with something supposedly is slightly unique with, uh, with another ideas format where, you know, more of like a crowdsource um, funding model. But we'll see what that comes out to. And I would, I, I should mention that Rotary or myrotary.org, so this house, you know, that contains everything is being updated and we'll come out with a new version in uh, hopefully July is the goal. And uh, it should be friendly on a mobile app, or not a mobile app, but a, a cell phone, as well as uh, like an iPad or something like that. So I know a lot of people, if you're trying to use Rotary Club Central, it doesn't work very well on an iPad or a cell phone. Hopefully that will change in July. Any other questions? This is Jason Duckworth. I'm just going to tell Kathy that uh, PM and uh, Amber and Patrick, that's a part of what they do at district level. So they have great information on how to take something from your club and getting it in the showcase. Yeah, yeah, they're great with public image and really like promoting and getting uh, the word out for that, for sure. Thanks for that comment. Anything else? How, by your, just kind of like a show of hands, how many people are a current officer right now? Okay. How many people are an incoming officer? Guess. Awesome. <laughs> or you, maybe both. Yeah, you could be both. Uh, perfect. Has, for the current officers, have you, has anyone had any issues updating the achievement? Um, or has anyone seen the benefits of your club? using Rotary Club Central? Yeah? Anyone wanna share? Uh, this is Matt Baker, incoming president of Round Rock. I think there's about five of us that look at this from our club. So I don't know how much of a benefit it is to the club as a whole, but certainly for, you know, Kathy's on here too. We're certainly trying to make better use of this and get more people using it. That's kind of one of our uh, shared objectives. So we're trying yeah. to get more members to look at it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, I know it's, it's tricky um, to get members online in general. And I mean, we've been dealing with that for the past couple months with COVID-19 and getting everyone to take advantage of all the online resources. And hopefully because of, you know, COVID, it's, it's forced people out of their shell to get on and use some of the tools that, that Rotary offers. And so, yeah, hopefully if you keep bringing it up in, in club meetings and, you know, revisiting it and talking about your strategic plan, it'll definitely be looked at a little bit more. Has any of the incoming officers had any issues setting the goals before your year? 
No? Okay. Perfect. You guys are golden. Wonderful. Well, we've got seven minutes left, I believe, before they kick us off. So, selfishly, I want to hear about your guys' clubs. How, uh, how's it been with COVID? Does anyone have a good experience of like an awesome service project your club has been able to do? This is Jason Duckworth. Um, so I'm in Temple. We've teamed up with Temple, Temple South and Belton. Um, worked with a local biomedical district to develop a uh, COVID-95 face mask with the reusable um, filter. And so all three clubs are joined together. We have a major, well, folks in this area, you know, we have Baylor, Scott, and White. So working with them and Baylor, Scott, and White to uh, provide those masks. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like a great project. Has, it, and has anyone struggled i guess is another question that i want to ask as well because with club and district support you know we work very closely with the membership team and we're always trying to figure out how we can do how we can better support um clubs and districts and so has any any club struggled to meet over these last few months uh for round rock uh, we've been we adapted to virtual meetings actually quite easily um Membership, I mean, the, the attendance has been lower. Uh, quite a few members, I don't think, were just ever got comfortable with it. But we started meeting again in person this week uh, while also uh, broadcasting on Zoom. And that seemed to work really well for us. Kind of doing the hybrid then. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. This is Dan yeah, Temple. from Temple South. Uh, we've been doing the uh, meetings by Zoom for the last what, two months, I guess. And the interesting thing is that our meeting attendance is is either equal or better than our normal attendance. Which hmm. is kind of astounding to us. Uh, we're now looking at blending. Nice. Yeah, that's a, I think that's such a great you know thing about this is a lot of people who normally couldn't meet, uh, you know, because of work, family, or I don't know. Somebody mentioned they had like fourteen dogs, and you know they have to get a dog sitter whenever they go out. And uh, it definitely makes it a little bit more convenient for a lot of people. But at the same time, you know, Rotarians love to be together. We love to interact and shake hands and hug and all that good stuff. And so that, that hybrid hopefully um, can be used a little bit more in the future to kind of accommodate. When we talk about Rotary International always talks about diversity inclusion. And we're not always just talking about racial diversity or gender diversity or whatever it may be. We're also just talking about being able to diverse jobs, diverse living situations, and really being inclusive to your community. Um, if some people live in a, you know, a medical community, there's different places where a lot of the residents work for a hospital. And having an online option maybe makes it a little bit more convenient for those who work off hours. Kind of thing. So that's, that's great. Fantastic to hear. Jim Darden, West, Otter, Rotary, West Austin Rotary. Zoom has really uh, worked well for us. I was surprised how flawlessly we went over to it. However, we do have two members that we have not been able to connect yet. And with COVID, we can't get to them to hold their hands to do it. So that's been a real challenge for us to get the, the couple that we that can't get onto it, you know, past that bridge and get them over to it. So still working on it though. Yeah, we've noticed that, I mean, across the board and in, in the country and, and world for that matter is it's a lot of times just getting over that first hump, right? Like to get onto a Zoom meeting, it's a one click situation and you're on kind of thing. And so it's pretty easy, but a lot of people are afraid or, you know, they get on and then they don't understand the mute or the video part. And so it does get a little overwhelming. I know some districts have created and some clubs have created like geek squads. So <laughs> to steal from like Best Buy. And they've, uh, they've been going around and assigning like five, a few people that are like the geek squad and they, you know, help not physically in person, like you mentioned, Jim, but at least like walk them through on the phone or something like that to help them get online. So it's kind of a cool thing. I think the, the part that I've missed the most uh, since we've been meeting virtually is you really don't have that networking opportunities. The, the way we do when we meet in person. 
uh, yeah. before the program starts, that sort of thing. So n now that we're moving forward with more of a, a blended uh, venue, it kind of takes care of that because I'm able to meet in person. Yeah. But I'm just wondering how other clubs have been addressing that networking option or uh, how we can be more plugged in to service projects that maybe other clubs are doing where they some members don't feel comfortable enough participating, but other club members from other areas may be willing to step up and participate. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's, you know, you can't, it's hard to have small talk on Zoom. Kathy, is, I can answer that question. Go ahead, George. Our, our club um, initially went to just a large group and then uh, um, because we knew that you couldn't have a conversation, we have a large club, you know, of 120 members. So it's difficult to have a conversation among 120 members. Um, so in order to uh, try to actually do that, the last two weeks, we've actually used what we're doing right now here with Zoom. We've used breakout sessions and we break them out into groups of five or six people. And that gives all the interaction and it works extremely well. Um, and, and the first time I saw the, the breakouts is it was at a totally another Zoom meeting. I go, wow, there's a great idea we can use in our club. And, and we've done that and uh, um, it's caught on really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a that's a great use of it, and and you do have to pay for that higher subscription to be able to do the oh, okay. breakouts. Um, yeah, the free account doesn't let you, and I even think maybe the basic account doesn't either. I'm not yeah, sure. but a, a free account doesn't work for club meetings anyway because it only lasts forty minutes. So that's true. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you're doing quick bucks a month, is well worth it. Yeah. Well, we're going to get kicked out of here in the next 20 seconds, but thank you everyone for uh, participating in this breakout session. Hopefully, you learned some things. If not. If you ever have any issues with, as I mentioned, online tools or anything like that, or even anything policy related, you have my email or phone number, feel free to give me a call or uh, email and I'll be happy to help. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. No problem. Hey, George Morgan. All right, I muted myself, Richard. Great to see you. Thank you, sir. You too. Vet. Or it said we were going to get kicked off, but <laughs> <laughs> not <guess> yet. Not. <laughs> not yet. It's lying to me. But feel free to hang out, go to the bathroom, and there it goes. Sixty there seconds. There we go. Okay. Not a minute yet. There we go. I got the notice. Yep. Well, see y'all. Bye, Nick. In forty-five seconds. You can click the blue button and it'll take you out sooner if you want. Sure. And instead of giving a presentation, you've got to sing the presentation. <laughs> his, his.